Pedro from EMPRX. I'm here today with Eric from I Prevail. How's it going? It's going great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Before we talk about post traumatic, uh, it comes out October 30th on Fearless Records. I, I want to go back a little bit and I want to go back into the Grammy nomination. Uh, wh what, what did that mean to you and the guys? Crazy. I, I, um, I still sometimes have a hard time accepting that that we were uh, nominated it's crazy um i remember being on the bus on tour we had a we had a day off that day and like usual i was sleeping in no past you know like one o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> and uh people started uh you know yelling and, and shouting on the bus um and i opened up the curtain i'm like what's shut up <laughs> like, I'm like, to sleep. Oh. what's that i'm trying to sleep yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh, shut up, try to sleep. It's only one o'clock. <laughs> and they're like, we're nominated for a Grammy. I was like, what? <laughs> so I get out looking, we're all like freaking out. I'm in my underwear still. I'm like, yeah. And then uh, shortly thereafter, found out we were nominated uh, again for, I think it was, I think we found out about Bow Down, the single first, and then, and then the album. And, and um, it just, it was, it's crazy, you know, being able, like, I didn't even get a chance to call my mom. I think my mom called me uh, before. <laughs> and um, it, it's just, it's cool because there's a lot of, a lot of friends and family that still don't really understand what we're doing. And, and they're like, oh, you're living on the road, playing shows. That's, that's cool. But now they see Grammy nominated. They're like, you're, oh, oh, I know what that <laughs> is. Okay. <laughs> You know, you know, everybody says that they're happy just to be nominated. But let's be honest here. How pissed off were you when you guys didn't win? <laughs> oh, man, I can't say pissed off is the right word. I, I will say being nominated in the time span that we've been a band, I, I think six years or so now, to be nominated alongside bands like Tool, like some, a band that I've listened to as a kid growing up, that was that was enough for me to be like, wow, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> but um, yeah, there, there, was a, there was a feeling of like, things are going too well, things are great. And then as soon as they, they, they don't call your name, there's a little, you know, sinking, sinking feeling in your stomach. But then I remember getting up because in that ceremony, that part was uh, one of our awards were one of the last ones announced before we moved over to the, the actual Grammys. Yeah, over the TV show. Yeah, but I remember walking out of there and immediately feeling that that same excitement again. Going, well, holy crap! There's there's so and so, and 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 there's so and so, and we're in the same room because we're the same. We're in the same business. We're in the same league. I guess that's crazy. So going back, I mean, I guess there's a there's a few minutes of a, a bummer feeling, but to again to to look around and be like these these bands are our peers. That's insane. That's insane. And I'll, that feeling will never change. If, if you don't look just at an, an award show as, as a way to define the success of a band, how do you define the success of I Prevail? Oh man, I, uh, that's, the, that's the thing. I never, we've never written a, a single song going, man, maybe one day the Grammys will hear this and maybe one day we'll get nominated or maybe this and that. We never, write music for awards so i think that's why these songs when something gets you know notoriety with sales or with you know, radio success or or grammys it's always a, a shock like because i personally never never thought of that but i i to look out and see like i said in six years we went from playing to a couple hundred kids, which at that time was unreal. Just starting out a band and touring and playing to 200 kids, like in a city you've never been to, that's crazy. But now we go and we play another country and we play a show in Vienna, somewhere we've only played a festival one time. And the second time we come back, that's our second biggest show ever. Like <laughs> we have one show in the States that's bigger and that's it. How does that even happen? I've never been to Austria. You know, that, like those moments when we walk out on stage and, and see how many people are there and how many different countries and through different language barriers, our songs are, are striking a chord with people. That for me is, defines 
what kind of success we have, that our music is really connecting to people. It's transcending differences of language and skin and gender and all that. And it's, it's reaching people. Uh, that's the one thing that I've always wanted to do when writing music, not the awards. So that's, I think the, the benchmark for me is to see these, these kids and, and everyone just uh, no matter what age singing along that in, there isn't a better feeling in the world. You said that you, 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 you guys didn't create songs thinking about, Hey, you know, let's put this song together. Maybe it'll be a hit. Maybe it'll get nominated. But now that you guys have been nominated, does that impact how you create the next album? I, in a, in an opposite way than I think you think not, not going, we don't go, Oh, we were nominated. Let's try this again and get nominated again. We went, so from lifelines to trauma, we were like, all right, let's, let's really try something different. Let's make, let's put a little bit of a new flavor on this, or let's try something writing a little heavier. Let's try writing some poppier songs like ballads or, or electronic, like hip hop influence. And, and this is where, where we got without ever um, a benchmark of a, an award in, in sight. And we were nominated for that. I think going into this next record, it's the same thought. Let's, let's just keep doing what we're doing. Let's keep going. Cause when we wrote trauma, there'd be a time where we were writing bow down and we're like, Oh man, we've never done something this thrashy heavy, like a little section, a little piece of the music. We're like, that's heavier than we've ever done before. And instead of going, mm, I don't know, maybe we should, we should, we should just play it safe. We, we said, screw it. And we leaned into it and that song was nominated. So I think going to this next record, it's the same mentality. Just fuck it, dare to suck. Let's, let's try something that we haven't done. Let's keep, let's keep being ourselves because it's doing well, you know. Now talking about post-traumatic, which I said at the beginning comes out October 30th on Fearless. When did that idea for an album, because I, I find that this album is very unique. I mean, it's not every day you release a, a whole live album, which is a copy of the studio album, just in a live setting, recorded ag across a multitude of cities and places. I mean, I, I was blown away. And not only that, you guys put it in a way that the album actually feels like you're listening to a concert all from the same city. So oh, thank you. So, so when, when did you guys come up with this idea for this live record in this format? Well, I, once we put out drama, um, shortly thereafter, I think our first couple shows were um, in Australia, Download Festival, and we got to premiere two songs out over there, Paranoid and Gasoline, and I think it was around shortly thereafter thinking, like, it would be cool to put out a live record of just a bunch of different cities, and, and that was kind of just the thought around that. And then looking back, halfway through um, the trauma tour in the States, we had a... Uh, Sobek, our, our, our sound guy, front of house guy, he's incredible at what he does, Josh Sobek. He, he recorded every single song from every single show. And that's been something we've do, always done. So we listen back and go, oh, that, that didn't sound right. We need to tweak that. Or like when I enunciate something like that or the breath I take, like it's a little like, little, uh, like in football, you know, looking back at the tapes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, so that's kind of how it started. And, you know, going through the tour, we're like, Sovac has all these great recordings. I think it's time we should put something together and just working between the band and him, uh, picking the songs and each city kind of has something special to someone in the band or to the band as a whole. Um, so to be able to go around the world as, as quickly as we did before, before COVID stopped us and to be able to get this many great shows with great responses from fans and these incredible memories it, it just seemed like the right time to put something together. And especially now, because even when I'm not touring and I'm at home, I'm finding a show to go to, whether it's some tiny little band that's just starting out or a tour that I've been dying to see since I've been on tour. I'm, I miss shows. And to be able to put something out that wasn't just, here's a single or here's a, here's a half-assed album that we, we rushed through in the last couple of months, but to put something out that kind of, hey, don't worry, things are going to get back to normal at some point. But until then, here's something to scratch the itch to make you feel like you're, you're at a show again. I, uh, I, I feel for as a band, we decided that was, that was really important to give to our fans, to let them know we're not, 
we're we're missing it too. And and uh, are you guys being a little bit of Dr. Phil towards towards your fans with this album? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. You know, I I uh, I know we're all we're all stressing and really really missing you know missing being on on the road. I I was thankful to be home for this is the first summer. You know, usually you're touring during the summer heavily. So this is the first summer to be at home and I got to spend some time with the family and, and some friends I don't get to see very often. But now it's, I'm like, man, I miss just being at the venue. I miss bumping into fans at the bar after the show. I miss just having those moments with people. So I feel like given something that was real and a reminder, like what we've been doing and, and uh, having that small moment of, when you go to a show for me, I, you know, for three hours, I get to forget about the bullshit that's going on outside in the world and I get to let loose. So if we can give that to our fans for just a little bit to hold us all over until this blows over, I, I thought that was, uh, I, I, we all think that was the best thing we could have done, you know? <laughs> well, being Canadian, I was really happy to see that you guys recorded Rise Above It in Montreal. So, so thank you for including a Canadian city uh, on this live album. As, as the ambassador of Canada in this conversation, I want to thank you for that. Uh, how do the Canadian fans rank uh, for you? Uh, first of all, of course, you're, thank you um, for being such a, a great country that supports us, our neighbors to the north. It's crazy that you guys love us as much as we as you do i love playing canada we don't play there enough um i uh i, I love coming through montreal um i've been practicing my french <laughs> the last year. so i um it's it's fun not only just getting to go and spending some time in, in the city but when we go like i said the surpassing language barriers like Montreal is uh, the, the closest city that we got that there's a little bit of a language barrier but to go and play and see how loud those motherfuckers sing it's it's amazing it, I love it and the poutine you're always gonna have <laughs> the poutine <laughs> it's a must it's a must absolutely every time I'm down here I'm down in Texas with my uh, my girlfriend's place now and there's a restaurant down the road that's like oh we got the best poutine I'm like bullshit no, you do not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned earlier that you missed being on the road. What is that on the road that you used to hate and now you're dying to experience it again? Uh, being crammed on a bus with 11 other people. <laughs> <laughs> Usually that's the worst because things start to smell. You start bumping <laughs> into people. You don't get your personal space. But now I, I need that back lounge where you could usually only fit three or four people. I need that back lounge packed out with 10 people just squeezed in there. I miss that. I miss that, that family brotherhood kind of like, we're all, we're all feeling either at different times homesick or a little stressed out, or maybe just tired from playing a couple shows back to back to back that we could all just get back in the bus and you're all going through it together. And y'all can just have a beer and relax together. I miss that. I, I really do. I miss the coming down from the stress. The stress sucked, but I'll take it at this point. <laughs> he gets it at this point. Yeah. I, I mentioned to you earlier, I really enjoyed the fact that you guys recorded the album in different cities, but the way you put it together, it almost sounds like it wasn't. It sounds like it was recorded all in the same city because the way it moves from one song to the other, it's perfect. I was like, how did, how did you guys do that? And, and it was that on purpose, you guys, did you guys want to have the feeling that it's one show, even though it was recorded in, in multiple places? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, that, <clears throat> that magic again goes to Josh Sobeck. He's a, he's a wizard at the, at the, the, the boards. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, I think, I think that was something cool that we really wanted to, to, to have that feeling that you're at a show and in between songs, you're just, you're waiting. It's not like, all right, it fades out and you got to wait and skip to the next track. And it, it pulls you out of there for a second. You're back to having your headphones in on your, your iPhone or your laptop or whatever. But for you to put it in and just listen to the whole record and to feel like you're at a show, I think that's part of the magic of get, sucking you back in and, and forgetting everything that's going on. You get that, that little bit of meditation or release or whatever you want to call it so it's uh it may not be the same as actually being there and smelling the puke on the floor and the stale <laughs> beer in the air but 
I guess you can, you know, spill some beer on, on your living room floor and kind of feel more like you're at the show. But. Create the atmosphere. <laughs> Create the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Start moshing and break your living room lamp. And <laughs> I was just going to say, maybe that's that's a future business to create candles that have a beer scent. So it, it makes you feel beer and beer. So it makes you feel like you're at a at a venue at a show. Oh, you got to cut this out because now I got to go do it before someone else does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially for the live streams would be amazing. You like one or two <laughs> for a live stream, it gives you that sense that you're at the show. <laughs> That's genius, my friend. That's genius. <laughs> well, you can use it. I'm giving you full rights. You know what I mean? Okay. You, you, you can go ahead and do it. Go to Shark Tank or something like that. and <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you my first case. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you this question. It's perhaps a difficult question to, to, to answer, but COVID is finished. The doors are open. You guys can go back on the road. Where's the first city you're playing at? Oh, man. That's tough. Um, I, if it was me personally, I could pick anywhere. It would be between going right back to Europe where we left off because we, we had a bunch of shows. I think we still had three weeks of shows to go. I think I, I'd want to just jump right back into it so it felt like we we're back, back to normal. If not there... I would love to play just my hometown uh, just because we've been, you know, living in, living around Detroit, um, then coming home and being stuck around there and you get to see the people firsthand, everyone around you. I would love to play a show in Detroit, seeing all those faces that were all like bored and stuck at home to be able to be a part of the, the, the revival to start off right at our hometown i think it'd be between those two one last question for you eric and that is where does hyperville go from now like what's the future for the band as you see it oh man um well i uh think it's time to make uh to make some more music and then once hopefully covid is uh done and out of here start start the road to normalcy start playing some shows um but for the the bigger picture i uh i can't wait i, I want to get back out and playing shows i, I want to take this band to, to heights that we haven't been to yet whether that's selling out arenas or or traveling the world again i um i just want to see what the next step is for us personally and, and just take it and keep growing and keep reaching and connecting to people with through our music well i want to wish you all the best of health and luck and success with this live album. I think you guys did a magnificent job. You guys are always pushing the boundaries. And I felt like with this live record, once again, you're pushing the boundaries of, of how creative you can be with a live album. So I want to congratulate you and the guys for that. And, and thank you for taking the time to chat. Hey, thank you so much for the kind words, man. Uh, thank you so much. Um, thanks for having me and uh, the, the support of the band that it means a lot. So thank you up and down profusely thank you and for everyone listening thank you for giving us a chance and continuing giving us a chance and go um, pick up the album yeah yeah so if you got the chance go pick up the record um we put out a bunch of vinyl for it too i i picked all the vinyl colors and and uh sorted that out so hopefully you'll check those out too all right man take care all the best yeah you too take care much love thank you cheers cheers <laughs>